All right, everyone, welcome back to my channel. I've got one of my favorite things to talk about. This topic on today's video is about intentionally designed classrooms. Now, as an instructional leader, I didn't want to be a micromanager. If you know me, that's not my deal. But I did feel certain aspects of a classroom were very important and really non-negotiable. So those are the four things we're going to talk about today. Number one, classroom needs to be set up for instruction. Yes, I know that sounds basic, but it was probably five years into my principalship before I really got this. And I had read the book, Spaces and Places by Debbie Diller. It's in one of my other videos, if you haven't heard about it. And she explains how every inch of the classroom is instructional space. If you go into your classrooms, is every square inch of that thing set up for instruction? Or do you have the teacher compound over here, desk in rows, and some things on the wall. You know, different schools are at different places. But after reading Debbie's book, I wanted everything to be instructional space. The ceiling is instructional space. So let's put some vocabulary up there. Let's put some graphics up there. On the floor, tape off the tiles when you're doing uh, perimeter and area and so forth. I wanted everything labeled with vocabulary words, especially at a bilingual campus. They need to see it in English and in Spanish. Really, in a monolingual classroom, they need to see it in English and in Spanish. But that's another video. Uh, the side of the teacher's desk that's usually blank, it's instructional space. If you have a window in, a, in the door, it's instructional space. Everything's instructional space. So, if you haven't read Debbie's book, highly recommend it. God, it's, it's a picture book. So it's gonna help you get this concept a lot better than me trying to explain it. But it's one of the key elements of an intentionally designed classroom. Is, is it set up for learning, for instruction? Second, communication. I wanted my kids to communicate with each other, period. But then I wanted them to be communicating also about the instruction. So if you go into a classroom and you've got rows of desks, that is not conducive to communication. I wanted groups. I wanted mobile furniture. I wanted different arrangements so that when it's time to, to be quiet and do work or do an assessment, no problem. But if it's time to collaborate and really think about the, the language, the vocabulary, the concept of what's going on in the classroom instructionally. I, want, I wanted it to be uh, an environment for communication. If that's not intentionally built into the classroom, it's not going to happen. So I want it intentionally built in. So if you need to have a conversation with your teachers about how, to, how are they going to really discuss and debate or... Uh, compare answers or whatever you want to say about it, depending on the content, I want the teacher to be able to explain that to me. And if they can't, then that's not intentionally designed. Okay, instruction, communication, let's go motivation next. Yes, motivation. Our kids today are being bombarded with so many things social media, politics, religion, um, the environment, just so many things. And not every family is a cohesive, well-functioning family. That being said, I think it's on us as educators to create a motivating classroom. Not all kids know how to be self-motivated. I would prefer for them to learn how to be intrinsically motivated 
instead of extrinsically motivated. And so I think that's on us to teach it. Are they tracking their data? Are they tracking their grades? Are they measuring their growth? Not, not just physically, that'd be easy, but uh, their attention span or how they're performing in music or PE or whatever. I think we've got to teach that. I think that's our responsibility. And if we don't have an intentional focus on that in the classroom, we're not going to teach it. So I feel we need to teach it. I feel the classrooms need to be set up for that. I think it needs to be an intentional part of a classroom. All right, the last one is inspirational. I wanted my kids to want to come back tomorrow because they didn't want to miss what was going to be taught or what was going to be done. Maybe it's Art Friday or maybe it's a motivational speaker or maybe it's the final lesson of a unit or maybe it's an assessment and they want to get after it and tell the teacher and show the teacher what they learned. That's inspirational. That's, hey, I get to come and be my best in this classroom. I get to be social with my friends. I get to uh, bring out my best strength in this classroom. That's what I wanted my kids to feel. They're going to be accepted in this classroom. They're going to have a part in this classroom where their personal item gets to be displayed. And on and on. If we don't intentionally put that into the design of the classroom, it's not going to happen. It's going to be, come in, I'm going to teach, you're going to go home, and we're going to repeat uh, this tomorrow. I didn't want that at all. So I wanted my classrooms to be inspirational. I wanted, it, wanted them to have color. I wanted them to have lights up. I wanted them to have a science section, an art section. What would inspire a kid to come back the next day? That's, that's what I wanted for my kids. So instructional communication, motivation, and inspiration. That's what I wanted for my classrooms. And if they're not intentionally created in that classroom, I needed to teach the teacher and the staff why I thought that was important and how I felt it was going to benefit our kids. So think about this, think about your classrooms, See what works for your school. Thank you.